Hello and welcome to exchangeformedia.com. With me today is one of the finest leaders of media and entertainment industry, Eileen Kirnan, CEO IPG Media Brands. This is her first visit to India and we're really excited to have you here and uh, thanks for speaking to us exclusively, Eileen. Tell me how has it been uh, in last 24 hours in India? It's a dream come true. I have wanted to come to India for years, so I'm very, very excited to be here. I've only been here for 24 hours, so my, my expectations are still a, a, you know, large and excited. Uh, the traffic in India is, ter is terrifying, <laughs> so that's my first observation. And it's great to be here with Diwali. The lights are very, very pretty, so I'm excited to learn and experience so much more. You have been leading India market for quite some time. Uh, as a market, what do you feel about India, you know, uh, when it comes to your agency business? We feel very optimistic about India. It's a, it's a scaled, big, powerful market for us. It's a top seven market. It's a big economy in the world. Importantly, it's our second most populous uh, country now in the world with the second most empl employees that we have globally, which is very, very important for us. And we're making a big bet on the role that India will, will play in how we continue to innovate and uh, create in the digital and technology space. So a very important place for us. So finally, this time, what, what was it that uh, you decided to have this APAC meeting in India? We are doing, it's my first year on the role, and we're doing business planning for the year. And our, my commitment to the team globally was every business planning cycle we'll do somewhere in the world. Uh, the last one was in, in Latin America, in Mexico City. This is in, obviously in India. And the next one will be in Canada, and so, far, so on and so forth. So I expect to be back in India again. We are really looking forward to it. So, uh, Lean, while uh, we know there have been a lot of factors because of which there has been a slowdown mm -hmm. across uh, globally, but uh, I was looking at your results, and APAC region in, uh, region in particular has performed, uh, I think, th there's been the maximum degrowth in this mm -hmm. region. The hardest, yeah. Yeah. So That's there fair. was uh, last quarter you reported a dip of minus. 3.3%. So what were some of the factors that did not work in this region mm -hmm. particularly? Well, the, the growth that you're reporting on is IPG level growth, so yeah. ours was a, was a bit better. Okay. That being said, the fact holds true that for us, APAC was the slowest growing region in this year for us. And I think there are a number of factors. I mean, it, it's, it's, it's fair to say that the macroeconomic environment globally has impacted every region. And usually, on, in a business of our scale, there's always one region that goes up and goes down, but the the rest of the world kind of compensates. This year, every region has been a little bit difficult. I think for APAC specifically, I think it's a combination of both scale and innovation. I think scale is choppy for us. We have large markets in Australia and in India. Then we have a lot of smaller markets. So when you don't have a lot of scale, you have less resiliency when things get difficult. Okay. And I think the rate of innovation, I think the insight for us is we have to innovate faster to make sure that during those times, we have more new solutions to bring to market to offset the dip. So during the last results, uh, Philip uh, Karkowski, he was global CEO yep. uh, of IPG, he, he spoke about a lot of factors that uh, led to the degrowth or slow down the growth. He spoke about decrease in client activity in the tech and telecom sector, increased concerns among marketers related to macroeconomic conditions. Uh, but these are all largely external factors, right? As, as a leader of the agency, what are some of the internal things that you can control during these periods? You know, I, I give that a lot of thought, because uh, obviously the levers that we have, we, we need them to be scaled, mm -hmm. especially during times of macroeconomic and social disruption like we're experiencing all over the world. One of the things that we're doing right now in the business is, it's kind of twofold, we have a, a two-pronged strategy, which is to really simplify and streamline the way that we do business to bring more accuracy, efficiency, speed, agility, uh, which I think makes the, our media process, which has become quite complicated based on all the media, media fragmentation, far easier to work with. And when you have a much more streamlined and simplified infrastructure, your ability to innovate far faster speeds up. So we're thinking through how we get this virtuous cycle of simplification, streamlining, to further innovation, to offset some of those, that volatility that we're experiencing around the world in the future. You know, coming back to India market, uh, what are some of, where are some of the areas where you feel that India is leading? You know, India is doing better than your other markets. India is very much a digital first market for us, so I, I think the rate of transformation that we can, we can expect out of India is tremendous. Um, we also learn a lot from India because it's one of those unique markets where the local business footprint is so large, and it's about 80-20 local to global, which is unusual for my profile. 
So what we can learn from innovation that's happening in India and bring to the rest of the world is really, really interesting. And obviously the technology sector. We're leaning very, very heavily on, on what India can do for us as a, as a partner in how we're all trying to drive change and transformation across our businesses. We're investing heavily in India, and we know that, that India will return tremendous yield for us in the future. Now, if I have to ask you the areas where India can do better, you know, uh, what are the domains in which India can learn from your other markets? I think one that's specific to India uh, uniquely, and then one that's probably common to all markets right now, the first one being integration. I think uh, we have a lot of amazing, amazing newer skill sets in, in our Indian teams across the market. I think how we bring them together in, in new ways to work in new and integrated ways for clients is a real opportunity. So integration, true integration, not just integration in terms of collaboration, but integration in terms of workflow is a real opportunity. So I'm, I'm pushing the India team hard to make that a reality in 2024. And then in terms of, of just all markets where we're, we're facing some struggles, change. You know, you can put change on, on a piece of paper, you can, you know, you can put the technology plan, plan in place, you can find the investments. Driving people change, changing behavior is extraordinarily difficult. So one of my asks of the entire network is to just embrace change and believe that, that what will come with that is better for all. Do we expect any announcements that you are here, you know, of integration or some, something new or some acquisitions? I think me being here is an announcement, a lot no. No, no big announcements. We, we've made some recent big announcements. We've done a lot of structural change across yeah. IPG Media Brands to simplify our offering, to bring all of our performance units together, and to create a much more simplified end-to-end -end workflow that will transform all of our businesses. So that was the most recent announcement. IPG tends to, as an M&A strategy, focus more on fewer, bigger, better. So we, we're, we are constantly looking at what we will invest in next, but I have nothing to report as of now. Stay so, tuned on that one. <laughs> so one of the integrations uh, that happened recently was Kineso. Correct. So, uh, and I, I just, as I entered, I saw the office of Kineso uh, on the ground floor itself. So if you can tell us more about it, you know, what was the idea behind it and how has it contributed? It's been, it's been some months since it's been it, about It's been about nine months nine now. Nine months. Yeah. So, you know, how is it uh, enhancing the overall business? Or yep, uh, it, it's a good question. You know, you're, the, cha the change is always hard, uh, especially when people are impacted and they're, they're asked to carry new cards or, or move floors or, or whatever the change is. It's already proving to be impactful for our clients, however. I mean, the, the, the rationale behind the change is, quite frankly, clients are demanding simplification. There is no longer a divide between performance media and media. They are one. So with those two, two realities being in place, it was obvious to us that we needed to bring our performance units, including our, you know, connected to data and technology, together into one unit. But operating against a workflow that travels into the agency brands, so every team works on a client, no matter which unit you're in, you're working in one singular optimized end-to-end -end workflow. Importantly, underpinned by one media brands, one P&L, one management structure, where all teams are motivated and KPI'd against the same goals. So clients are beginning to feel that simplification in our process. Things should be moving much faster. There should be less breakdowns or, or handoffs that cause slowdowns or inaccuracies in data. So we're, we're betting hard on our ability to really simplify how we work in this complex landscape. And in that simplicity, drive tremendous value for our clients. You know, talking of change, digital has been one of the biggest disruptor of this industry in mm -hmm. last oh, 10, 15 years. What kind of challenges does the Google and Meta do you play present to you? You know, they're great partners of ours. And uh, if you're in this business, you are in business with Google and Meta. So, I, I, you know, I, in that regard, I, I embrace them as part, uh, important parts of our ecosystem. It's always a challenge when there, are, when there are businesses that are enormously big that get a disproportionate amount of share for many, many reasons. Uh, it means that new innovation doesn't get supported the way that it needs to. It, get, it means that dollars diversification to support diverse platforms or diverse publishers get more squeezed. And clients get very dependent on the ROI models that be, they become used to in their, in their you know, MMM. So making change from the plat those platforms is difficult. That being said, they're already being challenged because the, the rate of change around us is inevitable. So what's happening with TikTok? Now, TikTok is a mega entry into the space that is quickly stealing share from the Googles and the, and the Facebooks of the world. Look at what's happening with Twitter. So change happens all the time. So while we, we make sure that we work with the marketplace in an open source, democratic way, we, you know, we deal with the, the big guys when, as we have to, and obviously they're great partners, 
but I expect ongoing innovation and change just to be the, the normal course of business. What does the future vote for traditional media agencies? It depends on what you mean by the word traditional media um, agencies so, or companies. When you're doing the traditional media buying and selling and not like digital is what we, we just talk, spoke about, Facebook, mm -hmm. Google and mean. all. The, the traditional things that you were doing in 90s and early 20s. Do they still so exist? I don't that's think they, what I, I don't, understand. I don't, that, well maybe that's a, that's a good question to ask. I, it's not about how you decide to structure as a business. We are in the business of connecting brands with consumers. To, in order to connect brands with consumers, you have to be where consumers are consuming media, where they're consuming content. The mm -hmm. fact of the matter is they're consuming content in all manner of places, primarily in the digital ecosystem. So to be avoiding, avoiding of those spaces feels like a very bad business strategy to me. So I think today's traditional media agencies are digital, are social, are performance-based, are tech-enabled, are data-centric, and should carry on being so. So, you know, recently we had a, a big conference on uh, media agencies, and, uh, you know, a lot of, almost all senior leaders uh, from India spoke. Uh, Shashi also spoke there. And, uh, you know, the most discussed topic was of remunerations, you know, how there has been a gap in this. And uh, there's also a trust deficit, you know, between the client and uh, the agencies and the whole issue of rebate and all of that was discussed extensively and it was coming from heart you know how I, I we could sense mm -hmm. it you know that this is this has become a pain point mm -hmm. for most agencies is it a global problem that's one thing that I would want to understand from you and secondly what is the solution that you think can reduce it or help address it first off it is a global problem it, it does take shape slightly differently in different markets around the world based on how people value the dynamics of the marketplace, different things that different teams value, different clients, but it's definitely a global problem. And it has been for decades. I, I think remuneration and how, how we compensate fairly in, in, in these partnerships has, has been a problem for a long time. I think the opportunity is, is to reconcile the disconnect that we have right now, which is we have a combination of we are accountable to driving growth through the most strategic and analytical of ways, including in our compensation, so driving real growth for clients, and at the same time, there's still an appetite to drive savings. Now, while there's a relationship between those, those two things, having both at the same time as, e as equal levers is a contradiction. So there are more and more clients who are willing and open to come to the table with us, and, and we have to drive these conversations really openly and transparently to really talk very honestly and candidly about what do we value as a, as a partnership? Are we driving business results? What business results? What are the mechanisms and pathways to get there to make sure that we're KPI'd against those goals versus some arbitrary legacy goals of the past? So it's a very complicated path forward. Lots of innovation happening. I have faith we'll get there. Lots of great clients want to go on that journey with us. But I'm not naive to think it's not an easy, a hard thing to, 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 to solve at the same time. Uh, you know, before we close, you're, you're such a, a senior industry leader. You've experience of across different markets. Uh, what are some of the other challenges that media business is currently facing and needs to be addressed? You know, I, I think the biggest thing we're all facing is if Boston Consulting Group came out with a, with a set of research, I think it was last year, where they were examining the length of duration of competitive edge. So in 10 years ago, if you developed a new innovation, a significantly scaled new innovation, or you were first to market with something major, you get a 10-year runway with which to optimize and really run out that differentiation. Nowadays, in today's landscape, that, that level of differentiation that you can retain for yourself is about 18 months. So with that as a reality, the speed of innovation that we have to be able to, uh, to act with in our businesses is extraordinary. So to, to do that, we have to radically simplify how we work, which is, which is a statement when you look at the complexity and the fragmentation in the landscape and the amount of data and tech that we're enabled with. We have to radically simplify in order to rapidly innovate. And I think that's the biggest challenge that we face as an industry. Uh, last question. Uh, you said India is your seventh market right now, right? right? What, are, what are your expectations in the next five years from India market? I also mentioned it's our number two market in terms of employees. Yeah, yes, yes. So yeah. with that, that's a really interesting combination. I, I think with the way that India is changing and the bets that India is making in terms of its growth on, on different industries, on the, the technology sector, I, I expect India to carry on growing and I, I expect it to be a top five market and maybe even 
further than that in the next three years. Thank you, Eileen. Thank you for talking to us. I know you have a packed schedule. You need to rush. But uh, hopefully next time you'll come and give us more time and come to our event as well. Thank you for having me. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. Thanks a lot.